So here we're just warming up shoulders. Specific movement prep that Coach Alex gave me. Really working on scapular control, so controlling shoulder blade. Cadillac bar today. <laughs> movement prep, it's the boring part. I'm lazy, so I always superset everything, especially in the morning. That's one thing I do like about training in the morning time. I'm already later and I want to get going. I have limited time, so I can't sit on the phone on Instagram. I can't go over here and do five of these and then these, like, we got to get going. Yeah. We got to move. So because of that, that's usually the way I'll program stuff for uh, my clients as well, is tell them, hey, just superset or giant set everything. Then by the time you're already, you know, at 30 or 50% of your weight, you've already done all that. Probably give a quick explanation too here in a couple sets of uh, the back injury. <sighs> this again, just some shoulder movement prep. Really focusing on control of the scapula. I picked this rack today. I usually pick one right in front of the plates. So I'm lazy and I don't want to walk all the way over here. We got a lot of work to do today. Yeah. Yeah. Five zero to four seven. So um, Coach Alex is currently doing my, my program. Before that, it's been uh, head coach Brandon for years and years and years. I've always been a huge fan of, of velocity. Um, didn't sleep well, back's cranky. Um, pretty much in a fasted state, right away everything feels heavy. And anybody who knows me knows I don't like um, the way shit feels, especially working with athletes, because it doesn't matter. You know, this isn't heavy, but if it was a heavy load, if it felt heavy, that's okay. I'm here to lift heavy shit. So when people say, oh, this feels heavy, I just don't understand it. But my mind doesn't work like that. I accept like the feeling of it being heavy, but not hard. All that being said, the beauty of velocity is it might feel shitty today. It might feel heavy, not hard ever, but heavy. And this will tell me it's not, you're moving fast, go up. Or if I'm truly off today, it'll tell me, yeah, you're not going up, you're gonna stay here and put in the work. So it's better for any kind of auto regulation than we can do ourselves. I've got a, a pretty bad drop off on velocity. I'm not the most technical lifter, but I'm, I'm pretty good um, if I put my mind to it. There's a certain point in my training uh, velocity or my training zones where you'll see big drop off. So a perfect track velocity might be this, working up to a max. Nobody's probably perfect. Anytime there's a flaw in technique, you would definitely see it um, in that line if we charted it. What I find is pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. I can almost guarantee what the next 20 pounds or 10 kilos is gonna be on the bar. And then all of a sudden I get you know, 80s. Uh, it's really bad above 90 all of a sudden there's a huge drop off. So we might predict my max to be, you know, 30 pounds heavier than it is, and I go up 15 pounds and just hit an absolute grinder. That's usually because I'm gonna misgroove technique by like a half inch or so, common for a lot of lifters. So I can't really um, exhibit my true strength level in that sense because it's technique that's holding me back. 350 off my chest, there was a slight upward motion here, lost my shoulder blades, it's probably a little bit higher, but there's upward motion and I'm out of a bad position and then I press through. What this won't show that um, Alex charted for me was really cool was the power curve right through that velocity. So I could see where I'm producing power through the range of motion. And interestingly enough, right about here where things got real hard, the barbell for a split second was motionless. Because of that fault, Alex is kindly torturing me um, multiple times a week, things that are making us work through that groove. So I'm working at a fairly high percent of, of uh, my load on velocity. We're obviously trying to move it as quick as possible, but the goal is to you know get stronger and more efficient in that position. Ah! Fucking no velocity. Normally you check the velocity if the string's attached. So it's not common that we would test velocity on something like a feet up Cadillac bench. 
reason we have me feet up caddy, for those who don't know, is I've got a pretty massive herniation extrusion as well in uh, L4, L5 that we've been dealing with for the past, I don't know, two months. So trying to train smart. There's no loading on my spine right now. Um, everything lower body we're doing is BFR and feet up bench feet up without arch and even without a very hard brace set and not rush um, through this injury because we would like to try to avoid surgery if at all possible. So if I would train like normal, um, everybody who knows me knows I train like a knucklehead, I would just jump back in and I would go up until it uh, hurt, which this injury we don't want to feel hurt again because hurt bad. You even see that with the way I'm moving, I try to be extra careful, pick up a plate, Normally I just throw plates on the floor flat, but they're hard to pick up. So everything I'm doing is trying to be smart so I don't come into forward flexion, which is not going to be good for my disc at all or what's remaining of the disc. I'm just looking back through data here for fun to see what I hit last time I did this. Started at 245 last time. So we're up a little bit if this sets good. Even if I can increase by, you know, two pounds all the way up, five pounds. And it doesn't necessarily work all the way up, but we're looking to increase that average load over time versus just hit one big top set and try to you know, hit a new PR. That's great for in the fun and gym, but that doesn't work as good long-term as small improvement, constantly seeking that average load to go up will lead to better strength gains than just, hey, can I hit a new PR in the gym for reps? Five, three, it says very fast. I don't know what that looked like to you, but didn't feel very fast. Where this is in my range, right? That was heavier than I did last time I did this. If I didn't have that data feeling a little off today, I might just choose to stay there and be like, well, it's in the range, so it's good enough. Nothing wrong with that. That gives me that extra data point to say, suck it up and let's put some work in. Alex snuck a bunch of volume in there on me. <laughs> I was not expecting that today. Fuck it, let's go to work. That was a shitty set. It's a lot of things that'll affect top end strength and velocity, right? Miss groove the rep a little bit, makes the whole rest of the set harder. There's kind of a good example like I was talking about. I went up, I guess 20 pounds but 20 pounds should not have produced that far of a drop off. Unracked it, had the thought that I was telling you, people think about, right? Unracked it, I'm like, damn, I feel it's heavy. I feel it's heavier than it should. Shoulders a little tweaky. I don't like feet up because I feel wobbly on the bench. So I bring it down careful, bing, ping it. But then once I get going, there were some reps in there. I think rep number three was probably the best. It was the fastest, it was above the range. So that says go up. If not, it's probably life stress and fatigue where I should be able to hit that. Cause again, 20 pounds lighter, it was cruising. Go up 20 pounds, it should be in the middle and it fell off the cliff. Again, technique misgroove, but if not, if I can't produce faster force or more force to produce faster bar speed, telling me that probably even though I feel like I can move it today, it's fatigue and life stress that's kind of uh, jumping in and gonna limit what we can press today. Normally that would just be a good time to get out the whiskey and ammonia, say fuck it, we're gonna make the weight move faster. Um, goal would be to come back and crush that uh, 402 bench, but I really wanna do it on my second attempt and take a run at like 418 on my, on my third. Um, if I can get the strength there to do it, it'd make me a lot more confident crossing the 400 pound barrier. But the thing is without pressing with feet down, um, I'm hitting some decent numbers for myself right now. Um, we haven't put a meat on the books, kind of waiting to see how the back holds up if we need to do surgery or if we can avoid it. So that's what we're working towards um, right now. But since training sessions aren't as long and as intense, I move them to when I can squeeze them in in the morning. So our training time here at the lab, we can start to try to, or I can start to try to pull it back to a little bit more team training. It's hard, something I've always struggled with as an athlete is to be a coach 
and an athlete at the same time. It's super hard. I uh, think I'm a better coach than I am an athlete. Some of that is because I've probably put a lot more time into athletes than I have my, myself as an athlete. Um, I know I've been a better lifter. I can be a better lifter, but you know, as my career, it's just naturally what I gravitate towards helping people more. So in the evening, I either won't talk to people very much and I kind of check out and do my own thing, which doesn't help the community grow, or I'll have the shittiest training session because I'll be coaching and spending a lot of time doing that more than my own training, so. Oh, a little better than the start. Five, five, six, five, six. That was fast. Probably saw that on camera though. First rep was lightning. Gotta do it again though. Those were getting a little tired by the end. They slow down a little bit. First rep should always be the fastest. If my second or third rep is my best rep, I don't get seconds and thirds on the platform, right? So we wanna make sure that if it's a technique problem, we clean that up so the first is the best rep because that's all we're gonna get. This might be some work at the end, but we'll, we'll see what we can do here. I may not be um, as focused as I normally am, I try to be very consistent with my setup. I talk to athletes about that all the time at the seminar. A little quirky stuff I do, like for whatever reason, it feels like I'm in a singlet. I tuck my short legs in before I bench heavy, the way I lay down. I'm not talking through my setup today, but the methodical one through five setup that we teach at the seminar. And it's very methodical every time I go through it the same way. So if something feels off, we can feel it better. Um, but that's my main goal, just like velocity. You wanna be very consistent um, if we do different shit differently every time, everything is just always slightly off and it's always different versus making everything super robotic, um, stick with the plan, stick with the setup, thought process, everything exactly the same every time. Take away the variables, it'll help you be successful. Blair, can I get a spot from you? I'll, uh, I'll cell phone rack, but number five might be a little slow. <sighs> Your presence made me stronger. <laughs> three, one, three, five, four, seven. That was a good set. That says I probably should have been over 300 for my last set of five at that grip, but to be honest with you, I don't know if I would've finished it. It always feels so slow to me on the last reps. Three is not that slow for me on bench, 0.3 meters a second, but that felt like it was slower than that. Well, I haven't hit this yet. And uh, must be the camera. I'm gonna be cocky and see if we can hit this for our reps on a short rest period. Close grip next on the caddy. Uh, feet up, same thing. Not putting uh, any axial load on the spine. So load from top down, gravity pressing down. Um, you don't have much of that not to get a force vector conversation because force is mostly pressing this way, but you do have pressure going this way, which is right up my spine. And you do have it in usually an extended position. So that's the reason we're um, choosing to cut out uh, all legs and leg drive. I was putting my feet on the bench there for a little bit, um, but Alex called me out on it because I was getting uh, more leg drive than I, than I should have been. Um, we're gonna cheat or be efficient as lifters. Where body's gonna help us. Really, I started doing it because you saw probably on a few reps there where I was a little wobbly. Um, that is not comfortable for me. It's even worse when I go closer because if you don't press it up perfectly straight, that bar's a little more tipsy. <laughs>
drop that a little bit. I don't think I can do that two more times. We primarily go off of uh, reps and reserve. A lot of companies or coaches like RPE, they're very similar. I'm better with reps and reserve, it's a number to me. Doesn't matter how it felt, which is more the RPE scale, how hard was it? And they both, again, have a similar correlation to numbers, but this, did I have two to three more in there? Maybe, maybe, Alex, maybe. Two more times, two to three in there? No, I had one to two for sure. Second one would have been hard. If there was a third one, it would have been real. Not a bad morning overall.